I'm building my first startup alone, which used to be a massive undertaking, but with how good AI tools like Warp are getting, building apps has never been easier. As a busy final year CS student and software engineer, the limited time I have left over to build projects is far too valuable to waste on mundane features. Warp is sponsoring today's video, but trust me, this is a tool I've loved to use over the last year, and with some of the new features they've added, things are getting insane. I hope you enjoy. So I think where most people fail trying to build with AI is giving it too vague instructions and expecting that to produce good results. These LLMs are getting better and better seemingly every week, but they're only as good as the context you provide. As AI gets more powerful and is capable of building more complicated things, it's important you develop the mindset of a product manager. What I mean by that is truly understanding the problem you're trying to solve and having a high level of understanding of what needs to be implemented to create a solution. This means coming up with very clear requirements requirements and specifications so that the idea you have in your head can actually come to life in code. For my startup creator Kiwi, I'm building a tool that helps you analyze what videos drive revenue and speed up the creative workflow. A part of that is uploading a draft video, perhaps something your editor sent you, and being able to leave comments at a specific timestamp. With Warp's dispatch mode, it can use reasoning models like 01 to come up with a plan and start creating diffs in line within your terminal. What I've found to be very important when prompting is to be very clear what you want what tools should be used, along with keeping the scope relatively small. If all you prompt is upload a video and allow comments, the output you'll get isn't going to be what you want. Tools like Cursor, which is my IDE of choice, along with Warp, have context of your code base, so they can infer what tech stack you're using, but explicitly saying to use Phosphor icons and Shad Sand components and giving specific directories is going to ensure that your output is what you expect. So I just took a minute to write a prompt for Warp, telling it how I want to implement it, the components I want to use, how I want to style it, etc. If we hit enter, it'll create a plan and hopefully be able to one shot this. All right, so I walked away for a couple of minutes and when I came back, Warp explained everything it did along with the colors and icons that it used and I'm quite impressed. So if I just drop in this video edit I want to look at, we can review it, make sure this is the right one. Awesome, confirm the upload. And here we go, we can start playing it. Let's leave a comment here. You know, let's add some B-roll. Cool, you can see it at three seconds. Let's skip ahead. Watch this over. Maybe I wanna say, let's add some zooms. Great, and then go to the end, make sure it looks good. Oh, what is this? make it less shaky <laughs> all right that's awesome i'm honestly really impressed in one prompt it did all of this of course you could then continue to work with warp to connect this to your backend api but i'm just really happy in terms of having this as a starting point now if you're an aspiring indie hacker or solopreneur the most important thing you can do is take action one habit i've been trying to focus on is reducing the time between when i decide i want to do something and when i actually begin i decided last month that creator kiwi which is an idea i've had in different forms for over a year would be the first startup i worked on within the next few days i cloned my dashboard boilerplate and started coding the onboarding flow now what i'm saying is not to immediately start coding but to think about what is the first thing you should work on taking even half an hour to really understand what it is you're trying to build in the data model that requires will save you a lot of time writing code and makes using ai a lot more efficient now one of the most effective ways i've found to make coding more enjoyable and in turn be more productive is tapping into a flow state if you aren't familiar with the concept it's a state of being focused where you don't notice the time going by and you're just locked into the task at hand with something like coding where you need to be thinking very hard, getting into one of these states is super important. My cheat code for this is waking up around 5 a.m., which gives me around three hours most mornings of uninterrupted time to focus on my projects. This could be a different time for you, but finding that time of day where you're naturally the most focused and you can have an uninterrupted block of time will allow you to get a lot more done. In a somewhat similar vein, knowing how to get good dopamine from coding is a fantastic way to stay motivated while working on your projects. As a solo founder, it can become a lonely and difficult journey, so stacking as many wins in your favor is crucial. For me, limiting how much time I spend on my phone has been the easiest way to reduce the amount of quick dopamine that I get. I do this with an app called 
Opal, but anything that prevents you from using distracting apps so that you can focus on the work you care about works great. Now, when you're building apps as a beginner, the question of what tech stack should I use seems very difficult and important. It's not important what you use, but to just find what you enjoy and can stick with. I build all of my projects with Next.js and Golang because they're the two languages slash frameworks that I enjoy and I'm used to using. Next is great for SEO, so it's what I use to build the marketing site. And then for the Creator Kiwi app itself, it's also using Next just because I like building with it. You can build APIs in Next, but I still like having a separate backend in a language like Go. As I was mentioning earlier with providing context to Warp, the knowledge feature is really useful to add information about your tech stack. I can add documents about everything I used to build apps like my front ends are built with Next using Tailwind CSS, Phosphor icons, Radix UI, so on and so forth. I can then say I send emails using loops, implement collaboration features using live blocks, and can then provide links to the right documentation. The key is to provide as much clear information to an LLM to make its job easier and increase the likelihood that it's generating correct code. Next, design is personally one of my favorite parts of building as I love getting to see a UI I built turn into something functional and clean. Knowing your tools only makes this process easier, so I use Tailwind in every project, which makes me really quick with it. Pairing that with inspiration sites like Mobbin are nicely done makes it really simple to get ideas about specific interfaces. For example, to build out this video collaboration UI, I can search for a specific video player or comments component, along with finding flows for adding a comment, watching a video, etc. I can then use those images in cursor to get a really good starting point. Just giving it the images isn't quite enough to get it where I want to, so specifically describing how I want the component to look and behave helps a lot when prototyping. Right here, I have a board of different projects where I already have one for a new YouTube video. I then have a publication, which is just an individual piece of content, so that if you wanted to have multiple videos under one project, you could do that. Coming into this publication, I have a breadcrumb, but it's not yet functional. I want this to link back to all of the projects and then the individual project that we're working in. If I pull up Warp, I have a prompt here that explains exactly what I want it to do. I told it I have this breadcrumb component, where it is, how it should fashion cache the name so that it can display it within the breadcrumb, and then the JSON format it should expect from my API. So if I hit enter, Warp will start to use dispatch mode to gather some information from the project and create a plan of action. All right, so Warp took a minute to create a plan using O1, and now it can run the job. So after just a minute or two, Warp was able to implement the breadcrumbs and you can see they're now working. You can go back to the individual project or the overall projects page. So this is really cool and just shows you the power of a tool like Warp. One thing I will note is it's very important that you explain exactly how you want things to work, what your API looks like, the specific routes we'll be using. It just reduces the amount of extra direction you have to give it. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about overthinking when it comes to building an app, especially for the people in the audience who know they want to build something, but either don't know what to build or don't think they're ready. The latter case is exactly the boat I was in for a very long time. And what came to help me was realizing that there will never be a perfect time or a perfect idea to work on. You just have to pick something and start. I've talked about this in many videos now, but my favorite way of finding ideas is to write down as many as you can. For months, I'd force myself to write down at least one idea every night based on some sort of problem I experienced during the day, and this eventually led to a few decent ideas. The most important part is to not worry about an idea being bad. You just have to get into the habit of producing a high volume of them. At this point, I have over 100 ideas written down, but there's less than a dozen I think are actually worth working on. Once you pick one though, as I've said, taking action as quick as possible and getting clear on what you're trying to build is so important. You might have heard this term before, but an MVP or minimum viable product, as I like to define it, is the simplest version of your product that solves one narrowly focused problem well enough. An MVP is not a full solution or supposed to be super polished. It's meant to validate whether the idea you have is worth working on. If somebody can find value from the first version of your product, that's a pretty good indication that you're onto something. 
building. The trap to avoid though is trying to build something that tries to be too many things to too many people. My initial idea for Creator Kiwi was to be this super broad social tool that would support every platform and let you schedule and use AI to generate content, so on and so forth. But building all of that in such a short timeline alone is very difficult. More importantly though, there isn't one clear avatar that would really benefit from it. After refining it, the first version of Creator Kiwi is a tool for businesses making content on YouTube alone to analyze which videos drive the most leads and conversions. Being clear on who is the right person to use your MVP and then the few things that it does makes it easier to build. When you're using Warp to create a plan of action, having a small scope for the MVP means you're just going to get a lot better output because you aren't trying to build an everything app, but just small and specific features. This is where AI can really excel and help you test a lot of concepts very fast. If you enjoyed this video, you'll want to watch this one next where I talk about how I tricked my brain to be addicted to coding. Thanks for watching and take care.